ready, his Bishop Jakes would say, get ready, get ready, get ready, because Prophetess Juanita Bynum is here live in the studio. She has a brand new book. It is called Pray from the Third Dimension. This is the revised edition. She is a New York Times bestselling author. And really, she is an amazing woman. She can sing, she can preach, she can write. She's an entrepreneur. She has a new TV program she's doing on Tuesday nights live on Facebook. There you see the master class, 7 p.m. So please join Joan and me as we welcome Prophetess Juanita Bina. <laughs> Thank you. You. you look so pretty. I'll tell you what, I'm sitting between two Jazzy J's, Joni <laughs> on one side and Juanita on the other. Oh, my goodness. Just fade in the background between <laughs> these two. Well, you know, God has done a lot of things in your life, Juanita. Yes. And uh, you really need to write a book about your life because it's hard to believe that one person could go through so many things and still come out uh, shining and smelling like a rose. <laughs> and God has done that with you. Yes. How has God been able to bring you through so many difficult situations? I, I really think, first of all, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I have to say that it has everything to do with prayer. I, I mean, there is no way. I, even the other day I was thinking about some things that I walked through and I said, I shouldn't be here. I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't be alive. But it testifies of the power of prayer. It, it yes. testifies that uh, no matter what people try to say about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I heard somebody say, well, I don't even believe Jesus is real. And I said, well, then you're going to have to tell me what you're going to do with me because that is the only name that I called on during my time of transition. And I call it transition because in prayer, God said to me, you're not in trouble, you're in transition. Wow. And so he had me to look up the word trouble and trouble said that um, when something is out of order and he said, I'm giving you an opportunity, this is not being done against you, but for you. It's an opportunity to you for you to set some things back in order. And praying from the third dimension was a revelation that God gave me. And I'm telling you, Marcus, it, it literally transformed my mind. And it gave me the level of hope and confidence that even if I didn't have that in the flesh, I had that in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he brought me through it. Well, that's what the book is titled, Praying from the Third Dimension. But I know a lot of our viewers want to know, what is the third dimension? Actually, the third dimension is God himself. It is Jesus Christ himself. Um, people say a lot, we're going from realm to realm. Realms are territorial. Realms are spaces in countries and cities that can be conquered and harnessed by an individual. A dimension is God and he cannot be harnessed. And I think that when I began to pray during my time of transition, I would go in my prayer room the, the way I always did. And I would be praying the way I always pray, you know, just, just going, going, and nothing was working. I, I, I kind of felt like I was knocking against a brick wall. Nothing was working. And I said to the Lord one day, I said, are you hearing me? I said, because it doesn't feel like I'm breaking through. And he said to me, you're trying to pray the prayer of tradition. Hmm. And I'm trying to teach you the prayers of the spirit. And I said, okay. So then hearing that word spirit, I started praying in tongues, you know, just, just going, going. And he said, I want you to understand that I don't want you to come into my presence and, and feel as if. You, you, you lucked out, and today you feel the awesome presence of God, and then tomorrow when you pray, you don't. He said, there is a pattern into my presence. And he took me back to the tabernacle of Moses, the Old Testament, and he said, it is the outer court, the inner court, and the most holy place. And he said, 
Let everything that have breath praise you, the Lord. That means all could come to the outer court. Yes. The inner court required a cleansing and it required uh, a commitment and a sacrifice. So not just anybody could go into the inner court. No, no. And not just anybody could go into the holies of holies. And so the pattern was always to cleanse and wash and inner search yourself to find out, is there anything that is in me that is going to hinder me from having an audience with the Shekinah glory of God. And the people that I'm praying for, Lord, before I try to tap that realm, cleanse me first, wash me first, and allow me to understand, turn the light on me like the book of Habakkuk said in the second chapter, which is a prime example of a third dimension experience. He said, I will stand up on my watch and I will see what it is the Lord will say to me. And now that sounds like two different things because I'm, I'm seeing and then I'm hearing and then, okay, well, what, what is going on here? But part of that scripture said something very powerful. He said, I will go high up on my tower. In other words, you have to come to a higher place because now in the hour that we're living in, I heard her talking about Israel, we are in a position now where it's not enough to pray from earth to heaven. It's not enough to say, oh Lord, will you? Now the Lord is looking for mouthpieces that will come in that dimension and pray from heaven down. Wow. In other words, getting the mind of God so that you can speak as God, knowing that when you open your mouth, you are speaking to the things that God is speaking to, and therefore there will be no delays and no hindrances. Now, Juanita, are you comfortable in sharing about the, the health scare that you went through just a few months ago. Oh, absolutely. And can we show those pictures? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Okay, because Joni, when you were here at Heart for the World, she was on the phones and she didn't get to see those pictures and I really wanted her to see it. So tell us about this because it was prayer, powerful prayer that yes. brought you through. Yes, and it was a miracle and I call it a miracle because I was in Colorado visiting my Nana and um, she went to the doctor. And she said, I want you to go to the doctor with me. And I'm like, oh, no, you go on. She said, come on, ride with me. Well, I hadn't been feeling well for some time. I had collapsed lungs the year before, and I was off work for six months, and my right lung collapsed. I went to Tobago to get better, and, 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 and that didn't help. I came back. They collapsed again, and I'm like, okay, God, something is going on. So when I got to Colorado, sitting in the doctor's office, the doctor looked over at me. Now, she's on the table being examined, and I'm sitting along the hall, and um, Dr. Johnny Johnson looked at me, and he said, are you okay? And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he continued to, to uh, 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 examine my nana, and he said, I'm a doctor. And he said, and I'm a spirit-filled doctor, and oh, something wow. is telling me that you're not okay. And I said, okay. He said, I want to examine you. So he asked my Nana to get off the table and he said, you get up here. So he started touching my stomach and he said, your stomach is hard. And I said, well, I work out. He said, no, this is a different kind of hard. It feel like I'm hitting a brick. He said, can I do a uh, sonogram on you? And I said, yes. So when he looked at the, at the screen, he, he looked at the screen and he said, I see seven fibroids and then God is my judge in that doctor's office. He literally quickened and said, hmm, and closed his eyes. So I looked at my nan and she looked at me. And for a minute, he said nothing. His eyes was closed. And he turned back and said to me, I just got a hunch that there's something else behind there that the screen is not showing me. And he said, and I feel led that I need to go in right now. And when you say fibroid, you're talking about tumors. Tumors, yes. And so he scheduled me for the surgery, emergency surgery. When he took me in the emergency room and did the surgery, when he cut me open, it was 33 fibroids and they were oh. coming out of my body and they were attached to all of my organs. Oh. They had pushed my intestines. That was, yeah, when he opened, that's 17 on the table right there. They had pushed so you my had twice that many. Twice that many. Oh, Juanita. And they had pushed my intestines up into my chest, and that's why my lungs were collapsing. They were attached to all of my organs. And the doctor said to me, I had to stop the surgery and make everybody in the operating room start calling Jesus. Wow. He said, We just kept, kept saying Jesus because it was mm -hmm. such mm -hmm. a mess that he didn't know where to start. He didn't know 
it, it was like, God, I'm going to need you. And when he came out of the surgery, my, my Nana said he flopped on the couch and said, say, oh, my God, say, oh, my God. And when my Nana said, oh, my God, he said, I just saw a miracle. And he showed her the pictures. He said, never in the 38-year wow. history of him being a medical doctor had he ever seen anything like that. Well, I mean, how long was the surgery? The surgery was approximately four hours. Oh, my wow. God. Joni King, that's unbelievable, isn't it? Yes. That is unbelievable. So how, there was how many? 30? 33 fibroids. And I did not know it. And he said they had pushed themselves to my, to my back. They went over my inside. So there was no protruding outward. And, he, and I kept getting sick. And he said, your blood was f filled with poison because some of them had burst. And they were leaking poison throughout my whole entire body. My goodness. So and that was a miracle. After it was over and they told you what happened, you begin the road to recovery. Could you just tell a tremendous difference in how you felt? Oh, my God. It's like that day, he said, the next day, he said, I want her tomorrow to get up and, and try to walk. And they, they got me up, and I walked, like, a few steps, and I was shaking all over like this. I went back to bed, and the next day, when they got me up, I had an encounter with God that my Nana said, while I was sleeping, my hands kept going up, and I was speaking in tongues. Wow. And I was literally unconscious. And she said, every now and then, your hands would go up, and you would start speaking in tongues. Well, the second day when they got me up, I walked around the entire uh, top floor of the hospital and about six or seven times, and they said, you, are you okay? And I said, yes. In four days, the stitches was out. I was back. It, it's almost as if the Holy Ghost bounced my body back immediately, and that's why Incredible. I still believe in miracles. Amen. Well, let's praise the Lord for that. Yes. This would be a great opportunity to call or go online if you need prayer. If you want this woman of God who's been through so much, you know, when people haven't been through something, how do they know how to pray? That's how do right. they know to ha how to have compassion and empathy? How can they have an understanding and be relatable? She's been through way more than that. We don't have time <laughs> to tell you all. I don't even know what all she's been through, but I know this. God knows what all you've been through, and He knows what you're in the midst of now and what you need to get through. That's Some right. of you are in it, and you need to get through it. If you want this woman of God to pray, make the call, go online, and we'll pray. Okay, so do you have to be a prophetess to get into the inner court or into the holy place with God as far as prayer is concerned? No title is required. Just humility and a desire to know God in a greater way. So, Juanita, do you go in the book step by step and lay out a plan? Yes, I do. So that people, it'd be easy for them to understand how to do this. Yes, sir, I do. From beginning to end, we start with the outer court. We even go to the garments. We start with all of the furniture that was in the, in the most holy place. We start with the brazen altar. And we literally explain how each one of those things apply to your life because the scripture said, we are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so now the, there must be a representation because that was a shadow. That was a shadow. That was a typology of where God was taking us in the spirit realm as yes. human beings. So now we've been transformed from a structure that was a shadow and a type to literally a living tabernacle, the temple where the Holy Spirit dwells, which means the requirement for all of these things that was back then is now being required yeah. to be in us. Well, the, the book is entitled Praying from the Third Dimension. The website is JuanitaBynum.com, or I'm sure you can go to Amazon.com and order it online that way. And uh, tell us about the Tuesday night Facebook Live, 7 <laughs> p.m. Let's put up that graphic oh my on there, the master class. Yes, I started on the floor with at three with me. And um, matter of fact, some of them are watching now from the Facebook uh, page because I patched it into the today's oh, program, into the Facebook page. But we, I started at 3 p.m. sitting on the floor. God just told me one day to sit on the floor and start looking into the camera, and I did. And um, it turned into every day I was there and thousands of people were listening. And so then the Lord took a break because of my new... Um, 
television show that's coming up on Impact, which is going to be at 3 o'clock. So I had to take a break to prepare for that. And that's when the Lord said to me, I want you to teach a master class of intercession because everybody is not at the beginning stages. And there are people who are ready for the deeper things of God and for the revelations of God. And now you have to take those people there. It's like they started with you, some of them did, and some of them have joined and said, you know what, I know how to pray the prayer of faith, but how do I um, learn how to navigate in the spirit realm so that I can do damage and take control and gain ground? And that's when God gave me the master class every Tuesday night at the New Greater Bethel Ministries at 215-32 Jamaica Avenue. And so every Tuesday night we're and doing that. And what town is that? And that's Jamaica, New York. That's oh, Queens. Oh, Jamaica, New York. Yes. Okay, Queens. Yes. All right. And in October, you're going to be speaking for our dear friend, Bishop T.D. Jakes at Woman Thou Art Loosed. Yes. And how many years ago was it when you did uh, No More Sheets? And it's like it just, everything exploded <laughs> ministry-wise for Juanita Bynum. No More Sheets was done in 1998. So it's wow, been that 20 long. years. So 20 this is going to be the 20th anniversary. Yes, 20 years, 1998. And... When I look back over it, it doesn't seem like it's been that long. Um, the last time Bishop Jakes and I shared a stage together was for my threshing floor in 2006. So I'm, I'm very excited, very excited. I, I, I believe that God has an assignment for me, and that was my prayer um, as I came through my transition and my sickness that I only want to be where God wants me to be. I, I don't want to be there for, for form or for fashion, but... I only want to be there if God has a word. And I Amen. know I know you know every time you've invited me to come here, that has been my statement. You know, I want God to be sending me and I want to have a word from the Lord and not just going just to say I'm on television or I'm on another platform. So that's why I'm excited because I believe the Lord has a word. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to go to a song. When we come back, we're going to allow Juanita to just minister from the Holy Spirit out of her heart to you. And we're going to tell you a little bit and show you footage of when she was here at Heart for the World, something happened that's never happened in the history of Daystar when it flooded. And I mean thousands and thousands of gallons. It even was coming into the studio. It was quite an ordeal. And so many times what God does in the natural, He does in the spirit yes. as well, in the spirit realm. So that's going to be fun to revisit that. And um, there's a few lines that are available. Well, let's see, there's two lines available. If you want Juanita to bind them to pray for you, then make that call or go online. And don't forget the book, Praying from the Dirt, Third Dimension. I know I'm going to get this book and read it, and it'll be a blessing to you as well. Well, here are the Daystar singers to sing from their new Great God CD, a song entitled, I Know the Plans. <laughs> Just take my hand, I'll guide you through 
so good. Yes, they are good. Juanita Bynum has a spirit-filled message for your life. Humanity, these collective lives of people in need, in love, in search. Our brokenness chases after us to define who we are, but we are not found in the darkness that we endure, but in the light that guides us. And those stories matter. Our special guest today is Juanita Bina. She's written a new book entitled Praying from the Third Dimension. There is a website, JuanitaBynum.com. I encourage you to get a copy. It will be a great, tremendous spiritual resource for you. Well, a few months ago, Juanita was here with us during Heart for the World. It was live, and something happened that's never happened uh, here at Daystar, and uh, a flood came in the natural and in the supernatural, and there you see it, thousands of gallons of water. It was just coming in from outside, and it got all the way into the studio. Joni, you got to see that for yourself, didn't you? You know, it's interesting because the Lord just gave me a calm that night. I mean, I was thinking, this is crazy, but it's almost like in my spirit, the Lord said that things sometimes that happen in the natural are a forerunner of things that are coming in the That's spirit. Right. That's right. And so I just claimed that that night, not knowing what all was going to happen because it was so crazy. But I really do believe that something happened and in the, in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. And I think that the Lord gives us eyes to see that sometimes. Don't you? You were That's there right. that night. Yes. And I, and I said that when I think your daughter ran over and said, there's a flood. Up. And I said, <laughs> go tell your father that's prophetic. Yeah. That's yeah. prophetic. And I felt it so strong. Like, you know, here we are. The glory of God is in the place. Mm -hmm. yes, and I tell people all the time that every time I, something happens supernaturally in services where I'm ministering, it always rains. Mm -hmm. And I said, to me, the heavens are open. I said, that's prophetic. Mm -hmm. And that's why I just kept moving in the Holy Ghost because I oh, said, yeah. no, God is getting ready to send the flood in the spirit and in the natural. Well, water is a metaphor for the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit throughout yes. the Word. Speaking of the Word, I want you to get your Bible, get your notepad or pen, or get your iPad, if you're high tech like Joni, get ready to take <laughs> notes. We've asked Juanita just to open her heart and minister from right there where she's sitting. Amen. And uh, a few phone lines have come available. If you need prayer today, make the call today. And let me tell you this, when you call Daystar, we don't ever ask you for money for prayer. We won't even ask you for your uh, mailing address. We're not trying to get you on a mailing list. We just ask for your name and the city and state or the country you're calling from and what your prayer need is. Yes. And we provide a free phone line. So you can call that number from anywhere, those numbers from around the world. If you'd like for Juanita to pray for you, I would call now because when she starts ministering, the lines will jam again. They've already jammed several times. Or, of course, you can always get through at daystar.com. 
One, Johnny? one thing I want to ask, Rachel and Josh are actually watching in Brussels, trying to stay awake. They're in Belgium. <laughs> But she said, just ask Juanita right before she shares. Rachel Lamb is in Belgium, and she still yes, has Rachel. her fingers yes, in is. what's going on at Daystar. Oh, my it's, goodness. It's, it's a good question. She saw, the, of course, your testimony. But had that gone un undiagnosed for much longer, could you have died? Actually, um, I, I don't say this often, and I've only shared it with a very few people, but I think they lost me on the table. Wow. I, um, one of my intercessors, uh, Apostle Marie Carrier, was there, and they went to the cafeteria to uh, eat while I was in surgery. And in the middle of the cafeteria, she just threw her hands up and started speaking in tongues, and people was looking. And she said, I felt a cold breeze go through me. And the Lord said, the enemy just tried to snatch her life. And I believe when my doctor, um, Dr. Johnny Johnson, starts saying telling everybody to call Jesus, I believe that's what happened. Wow. But yes, I would have. And he said, literally in a matter of less than a month, because I was so infected and everything, my organs literally was shutting down. Right. right. And, and that poison going through And that system. poison going through my body. And yeah. it was God that sent me to him in Colorado. Yeah. Amen. Thank it was God, God for bringing yes, you. Yes, I would have died. Juanita, just begin to minister okay. to our viewers Amen. as the Lord leads you. Okay. Well, if you would get your Bibles, if you would, and turn with me to the book of Habakkuk, the second chapter and the first verse. And this is a scripture that I want you to kind of keep this scripture near you, especially if you are intercessor and you are a person that um, have been desiring to go to another dimension in God. This particular passage of scripture is going to be a very, very vital piece of information for you. And I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Bible, so if you have the King James Version, just follow along anyway. It said, oh, I know I have been rash to talk out plainly this way to God. I will in my thinking stand up on my post of observation and station myself on the tower or fortress, and I will watch to see what he will say within me and what answer I will make as his mouthpiece to the perplexities of my complaint against him. And so here we have in the book of Habakkuk going through some of the things that some of you all are dealing with today. And I say that because at that particular time, Israel, there was a lot going on, bondage, and it looked as if the enemy was winning. And so Habakkuk was frustrated, like, God, are you going to allow this to happen? And how long is this going to go on? And when he said to me, I want you to stop and get definitions for some of these words here, because somebody is looking today and you're saying, I've been through something and it's, it's lasted a long time and I don't know how long, you know, will the Lord allow me to suffer this? But I ask you the question, are you really, really suffering? Um, and is that something God is allowing to be done against you or for you? When you look at the word post, it said, a long, sturdy piece of timber or metal set upright in the ground and used to support something or as a marker. So in order to get support from the Spirit of God, in order for you to be sustained in what it is God is developing out of you, Sometimes it's going to take a long time, and sometimes God is going to require that what you are dealing with, that he is in the process of planting you. That's right. This won't be one of those things where every wind and, and, and storm will blow you away. When God gets through processing you through this, you're going to be established, and not only established, but it's going to be a marker for you. In other words, you're going to be able to look back at these times. I know I'm talking to somebody. You think it's the worst hour of your life, but you're going to be able to look back at these times and you're going to say, I know my God is real because this situation right here is my marker. Are you hearing that? Yes. Then he said, he said, I will also, I will also be careful in my observation. And observation is the ability to notice things, especially significant details. 
It also says, watch this. It says to take a photo of the altitude of the sun or another celestial body for navigational purposes. I had a little experience where I went to Home Depot and I saw these solar lights. And as the solar lights were sitting there, I wanted to put those in my yard. I got the solar lights and they said to me, without electricity, without being plugged in, these lights are going to come on when the nightfall comes. And so I ran out there and I put them in there and I stood out there about seven o'clock waiting for it to get dark. And sure enough, the light came on and I was amazed. And so I went back to the store the next day because I said, I got to find out what made these lights work like this. When I went back, the store uh, uh, director said to me, when the sun is shining, the solar light, the solar panel, it takes a photograph of the sun. And so when the darkness comes, the light comes on because the light was photographed in them. That's why right. during the good days when you were in your best worship, during the time when, when God was good to you and you was ready to run around the church and tell the whole world about Jesus, what you did not realize is that you were taking a photograph of who God was. And that's the reason why in your darkest season right now, the light is still on. And when God gets ready to do what he's going to do, he had to say this to Habakkuk, you can be upset, you can can go through your changes, but I'm here to tell you that things are going to change. They're yes. not going to Hallelujah. be the same. He said, this right here is temporary because this is my ability and my way of teaching you who I am. And he said, not just that, there's a bonus in this for you if you're watching today. And the bonus is this. He said, the reason why I got to stand up on my watch to see what it is the Lord will say to me, that's two different things, seeing and hearing. But medical doctors have proven that when you really hear in your inner ear, then your ears pick up not just the phonics, but it picks up the spirit of what is being said, and it turns into a movie in your mind. So when you know that you have heard from God, you will see what God is saying. Amen. And once you see what God is saying, he said, now I'm going to use you you as my mouthpiece to speak to the perplexities in the land. Yes. And whatever it is that is perplexing your soul, whatever it is that is perplexing your family, whatever it is you see in the United States and around the world, God is calling for his people to come to the third dimension so that we can see what God is saying and we will be able to prophesy to the perplexities in the land. Just like the Bible said, when it came down to God dealing with Nebuchadnezzar, he said, cut down the tree, but save the roots, because the roots is the prophetic word of God. The roots is God's original intent about your life. That's right. You're watching today, and you didn't turn this television station on by accident. God intentionally had you to touch that dial because you're looking for a prophetic word to come from across town. You're looking for somebody to speak into your life. When God is speaking now and saying, that which I am walking you through, I am anointing you right now to begin to speak your situation. Thank God. I'm calling you. That's right. You're saying, well, you know what? I don't feel like I'm in the position. Feeling wasn't in this scripture. Uh, yeah. Feeling wasn't one of the criteria, but hearing was. Yes. And that's why the Bible said, guard your ears and be careful what you are allowing so people good. to speak into your ears because the movie that you see is what will get in your heart. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So right now, I'm telling you, take courage because it ain't over until God says it's over. That's and right. that which you are going through, you're going to come through it and now you're going to be able to prophesy where God is about to take you. I'm telling you, your best days are yet to come. Amen. What a good, encouraging message. Take heed to that. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, we got two minutes left. Already thousands of prayer calls have come in. I, right then, I felt a shift in the level of the anointing. If you need a healing, if you need a miracle, if you need to be set free, if you need a breakthrough, if you need to turn around, Make your way to your phone. Call our number. It's a free phone number internationally, and it's a toll-free number in the United States. 
Go, or go online to daystar.com and click on prayer. In just one minute, I'm going to give these thousands of prayer calls to prophetess wanting about them, and I want your prayer call or your, e e uh, your uh, internet message on here. And while, we're ca while you're calling, don't forget the new book, Praying from the Third Dimension. And the workbooks. Th th there's workbooks that come with it. Uh, the Tuesday night Facebook Live, uh, 7 p.m. And then October, she will be speaking at Woman Bower Loose for our dear friend Bishop T.D. Jakes. And uh, that will be at the Potter's House. So make that call. Joni, anything you want to say quickly? No, just continue to call and just allow, you know, as the river's being stirred and the, the presence of the Lord is here, that same presence is in that room where you are right now. And just lift your hands up and receive what God has. I hear you. the Lord saying somebody's being healed of leukemia. Yes, yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, you, grant that answer to prayer. Jesus, you are the healer. And healing is the children's bread in Jesus' name. Nina, we have about 30 seconds to pray. Would you lead us you, in God. prayer? We thank you, God, in the name of Jesus, for everyone that are watching, Glory for every God. one of thank these you. prayer requests. We rebuke Hallelujah. the spirit of delusion. We Wonderful rebuke the Jesus. spirit of the lying spirit that comes to torment the mind. And I speak deliverance and healing and breakthrough in the lives of everybody thank that's watching. You, and I speak thank that the you, power Jesus. of God would hit you in your house right now and cause change. And I'm talking about permanent change. You, and anoint thank your you, mouth to to speak to the perplexities of your situation and let thank it be you, done Lord, now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, we love you. We'll see you again right here on Daystar.